Hi guys. So today I want to talk about the best eyeshadow palettes that came out in 2018 and uh, 2019 so far. And number one on the list for uh, best eyeshadow palette of last year, it's going to go to Pat McGrath. And the, the Mothership Bronze Seduction I thought was one of the best. I uh, had no hesitation to purchase this right away when it came out because of the great reviews and they were definitely worth it and I would definitely recommend this palette to you guys. It is just so beautiful and so stunning and I would rank this as my um, number one palette of last year. One I have to say was this Pat McGrath palette. Uh, it was very versatile and beautiful. Um, next up, uh, it was probably the Fenty uh, Avalanche. It's not an eyeshadow palette, but it is loose pigment, which you can use as an eyeshadow. I was in love with this. It was, it totally surprised me, and I definitely recommend this to you guys. I wrote really good reviews about this. Uh, on the web page and I I'm really glad that I was able to get one of these I believe now they are on sale but I definitely recommend it to you guys um, these loose eyeshadow palettes um, last a long long time and they are just beautiful and I, I definitely would rank these as my top top uh, eyeshadow palettes of last year even though this one is really uh, a loose loose pigment palette so these are my top two for last year um, probably next on the list would be the Natasha Denona gold palette but mine broke apart and so I, I put them all together with my sunset and other Natasha Denona favorites um, third on the list is definitely going to be the Too Faced gingerbread spice palette I, I really enjoyed this palette and I think I reviewed this for you guys earlier and it is it smells good it, the color combination is great it's it's just so beautiful to look at and definitely on my uh, top four there number five is probably the uh, Norvina palette it has some uh, nice purple shade in there and um, the colors are very unique, and I, I really recommend this to you guys. This would probably be my number five. Number six, uh, I would say is the uh, Huda Beauty Nude Palette. Uh, I think I talked about this in my previous videos a few times. Uh, it just It's just amazing, and it has its own concealer, and, and I got a ton of compliments every time I wore this, so I, I recommend that for you. Next up, uh, probably number six is the uh, Soft Glam palette. This is also a beautiful, beautiful uh, nude kind of looking um, eyeshadow palette. I had this on for my wedding. It was just beautiful and and it just, it's, it's a showstopper and I love it so much. Uh, we have the James Charles palette. It was a very popular palette this year. Um, I guess a lot of people uh, liked these um, bright colors. Uh, my favorite colors of this palette were probably these two shades. And uh, yes, it did perform. And uh, I would probably rank this in my top five. And uh, however, I will say that my favorites are still these two. Uh, next on the list is the Urban Decay Born to Run. I thought this palette was amazing and it's so versatile and so far as you see as you can see it's not gone on sale. It's become a staple item. They came out with a vault. I reviewed that vault for you guys and I definitely recommend this. It's um, probably my number six or seven. Next up is I'm torn between this uh, Kevin Aquan palette and the uh, Too Faced Pineapple palette. I like the Too Faced Pineapple palette because the colors are so unique and they smell great like pineapple. Um, 
they have some nice two tones in there, which you can use as an everyday. I'd probably rank this above the Kevin Aquan. The Kevin Aquan uh, Nude Pro, it's more like a cool tone palette, but it is an everyday palette that you can get a lot of use out of. So I would probably rank this as my number nine. And then on to number 10, I would probably go with any of these Natasha Mini. Next on the list is the um, the Naked Cherry. I believe you can still get a lot of good looks out of this. It's not, you know, uh, as highly ranked to me as the uh, the Gingerbread palette or um, or any of Pat's palettes, but but it is still uh, a beautiful palette, and I think that it's worthy of you know, being in the top 10. And I really enjoyed this Deuce or Deuce palette by Juvia's. Uh, I combined mine with the Zulu, just to get a mixed up, mixed look. I really enjoyed Juvia's place, and I think that they also deserve to get highly ranked. Uh, next is the uh, the Tardiest Pro Remix. I probably would say this is uh, one of my favorite Tarte palettes that came out last year. It's got a nice mix of shimmers and a little pop of blue-green, and it's something that they haven't done before as well. So I really enjoyed that as well, but it wasn't you know one of my top five, while at the same time it was still okay and good to look at. I don't know about this palette, the uh, the Too Faced Berry palette. It's it's very pigmented, but as you've seen with other reviews, the smell is still very overwhelming. So that I wouldn't recommend so highly. Then we have these Tarte Holiday palettes, which uh, they're they're okay. They you know they perform okay. They're not outstanding. It's just a holiday palette. Uh, next is probably the the Safari palette. The um, the pigmentation, as I've shown you guys earlier in my other videos, the it's a little dry, but the, it's really beautiful to look at still. And then it's probably the uh, the Fenty um, Kilowatt palette. This is this can be used as an eyeshadow. It can also be used for cheeks. I I thought it was a good palette as a, a, to a topper. All right, another mini that came out this year was one of these uh, Too Faced uh, minis. This one was called Tickle Peach. They also came out with a cookies and cream, which I did not like, but this this mini smells like peaches. Uh, it smells like their older formula, not like the new uh, peaches and cream formula. Comparing these uh, minis side by side with the Urban Decay, I would probably tell you guys that between these, I would probably rank the Natasha Minis first, and then any of the Urban Decay Minis, and then lastly, the Too Faced Mini. Then moving on to my least uh, favorites, is between these two, the Lorac uh, Shine Palette. I wouldn't say it's one of my least favorite. I'd say this is probably just uh, an alright palette. I would probably give it a, a B ranking. Uh, the Beauty Bakery one is the one that disappointed me the most just because the colors I felt like they're they don't really go well together I didn't really care about the story here There's not much you know that you can combine together unless you're really creative that you would put these colors together somehow but for me this palette was a miss and I would um, recommend the uh, Lorac one over this any day Next, uh, any of these three Born to Run minis, I would probably rank these, um, I'd probably give them a, a B compared to the, the original Born to Run. Um, they're supposed to be more of travel friendly type of palettes. This is more a uh, red tone, dual tone, you know, as you can see here, I'm not gonna bother opening these, but, but yeah, so these, of, of, if I were to say what's my favorite, I'd probably say the dual tone because the quality of these reds are um, just so much nicer and uh, the purple one is the one that disappointed me the most you know it only has like one purple or probably even two you know as you can see you know the colors are the sh the glitter is kind of I don't know I wouldn't say it's shimmer it's more like a glitter palette and then the blue one again there's just like a little pop of blue but again, these are still way better than, for example, the, the Too Faced palette, the Pretty Rich one. So, so I would recommend these over 
over any of, of these palettes. Uh, moving on to more of my least favorite palettes are these and I uh, for me it turned out to be uh, really patchy and uh, you know as you can see it didn't if you look at this this barely performed on my skin and so it was one of my least favorites of last year uh, moving on I didn't I wasn't a huge fan of these color pop palettes uh, again the, the the pigmentation was kind of uh, dull but I'm going to go and talk about better palettes as we go along. Uh, and another one of my uh, least favorite palettes of last year was the uh, Too Faced Pretty Rich. It was definitely, you know, it was very, the glitter was all over the place and I really didn't know what, what to do with, you know, half the time when the colors were like not even going well together. As you can see, um, it was a pretty palette to look at, but as far as performance, I did not recommend that one. Uh, also, another holiday palette that you know was kind of just for the holidays and quickly went on sale was the uh, the Tarte Pineapple palette. Again, not a huge favorite, um, but starting to get better. You know, this Elements palette. It was a good palette, but it also went on sale, and that's probably because compared to the Born to Run palette, it you know it it has less of an everyday use, and this continues to be a staple item um, palette for 2018. Lastly, I would probably say if as far as a low quality palette, any of these Alta palettes don't enjoy these uh, as far as the quality, but they're just pretty to look at. So there you have it. These are my uh, top picks of 2018, the Pat McGrath uh, Bronze Seduction and the Fenty Avalanche. And thanks again for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you guys later.